It can't be that bad, oh, 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 it can't be that bad. See, who do I connect with the most? I think for the longest time, I've, I, I, you know this about me, I wanted to be like ja- Jackie Pacquiao. Chan. Oh. Manny Pacquiao. No, Manny Pacquiao, a great fighter. Don't really want to be anything like him, really. I don't really care for... You could be like his workout regimen. You would want to emulate that, I could see. Oh, I mean... Nah, homeboy's yeah. too lean. I mean, oh, he needs yeah, to put on been, some. I mean, which makes sense for he's his a featherweight, like. Featherweight, yeah. Yeah, he's a featherweight, featherweight fighter. Lightweight, whatever he is. Something. But middleweight. Like, he might actually be a middleweight. At this point, he's middle aged. He, sure. he shouldn't be fighting. He, I don't think he is. He wants to. He wants to again. He's been throwing some names out there. I thought he hung it up. Uh, that th- you never to hang do it politics. Up. You never hang it up. What? Once a boxer, always a boxer. That's right, pal. Hey, Mike Tyson's in there fighting. Is he still? Yeah, I thought he just, he just has he, a podcast. He did that exhibition match with fucking Evander Holyfield he's, last year. Man, he's going to bite another ear. He should it bite another it ear. It was Evander's ear that he bit. Oh, and they're going to do it again? Well, they did it already. How'd it go? They, he didn't bite anyone's ear off. <laughs> he saw it in both of his ears? Yeah, I, I guess they buried the hatchet. Evander doesn't hate him anymore. What's so. your dirty move? Let's say you're a boxer. What's your dirty move? Uh, I'm going to kiss him. <laughs> oh, that is, that is what you do. Yeah, and that not only does it confuse him, but it, it's minus six HP. Can you imagine? the? Oh, it's like Pokemon rules. Can you imagine the judges like being like, uh... Disqualify? I'm is not there sure. A rule? Is there a rule in boxing For that kissing? says no kissing? No, I don't think there is because I feel like boxers they... might accidentally kiss already. Yeah, or would they have to like classify that as being like, uh, that's an illegal move? Mm, right? But then that's they would have to vague... go to the rule book. That's an illegal rule, illegal move. How about like, I mean, but all these boxers are always hugging each other. You know, like when they get tired, when one gets tired and they want to be separated so they can catch a few breaths. And they just like start hugging each other. They just, I mean, that's like that much closer, and you just like a few kisses. I know Tyson Fury like licked the blood off of his opponent one time. Weird. Well, he likes to taste the pennies, and he just wants to get sick. Oh, I think it was a, you know, I throw a I'm, kick. I'm fucking owning this shit. No, because that's that's an illegal move. That <laughs> I don't get no, to do. that's my dirty move, man. If you could bite an ear, you could probably like throw a kick, and there'd be less repercussions. Um, I would just like punch him in the back of the head. How would you get behind them? You would wrap your long arm around? I mean, there's ways. It's easier than you think. I, I don't know. Because when Conor McGregor fought Mayweather, that was a big thing. Because Mayweather would get wrapped up and Conor would start punching down, which is legal in UFC, but you can't do that in boxing. Nope. And that's... so they keep breaking him up and be like, you can't hit him on the back of the head. And he's like, I, I don't speak English. I'm Irish. <laughs> I'm pulling some shit like that. Yeah. Same with Pacquiao, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? One more time? <laughs> That's what the Gallic sounds like to you? <laughs> or a Filipino with a uh, Filipino accent? Ewok. Ewok, yeah, very specific. Are we keeping this all in? Because we haven't even said hello or anything. Oh, we could. We could not, but we could just start welcoming the baddies. Well, I want to I want to say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. By the time this comes out, it is about to be Christmas. It's Christmas Christmas Eve. 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 Yeah. Um, and we are, we are just here to wish you a happy holidays. Thank you for rocking with us. Yeah. Hope your Hanukkah was nice. Yeah. Hope whatever you celebrate was nice. Yeah. Enjoy your Kwanzaa next week. Hopefully you got a lot of, you're going to get a lot of presents. But it's also not about the gift. Sometimes it's about the gift of connection. Yeah. I mean, now, now we're, we're getting, we're dipping out the, the air of COVID and you can see your friends and family. Yeah. Give yeah. them all a kiss, right on the mouth. Right on the mouth, because it's completely fine. If you're that kind of person, if you're like Tom Brady, who kisses all of his children on the mouth, right? That's who. That's what you he gotta does. show dominance. Yeah, is that? I don't think that's how you assert dominance. It, it is. Trust no. me, you don't have kids, but you'll learn. But I mean, if it's if your family is already run by a patriarchy and you're the dad that brings in the money, I'll be honest. The mom made way more money than Tom Brady does. How so? Giselle Bundchen. Makes, made way more money in her modeling career than Tom Brady will ever see as a quarterback. Really? Do models oh, yes. make that much more than a she, football player? She does. She Giselle Bunchen did. Whoa. She was she was the model. She was Victoria's Secret's girl for years. Good for her, but I didn't think it would be like That was a joke that everybody was saying at my bar was like if Tom Brady when Tom Brady gets through this divorce, man, he better file for alimony. You gonna be the type of dad that kisses their kids on the on the around the butt. Did you just fart? Yeah, but it wasn't for our friend. It wasn't on mic. Yeah, no, but still, I heard that through my earphones. What the? And you did it cartoonishly by lifting your leg and doing it? I'm sorry. I was. Yeah, it's. What? I apologize. Was it the pigs in the blanket that you had downstairs? No, it was probably the burrito I ate before I got here. Well, at least you apologize. I've never heard you apologize for a fart. You usually just cup it and throw it like a baseball. 
I am too far away and I have a hand in my pocket. And you've grown up and you're almost 30. No, I still do it. You, I just too, didn't do it this time. Oh, too lazy to, to throw a fart is what it is. You know what? When it gets cold outside, I don't like to, you know, exert a lot of energy. What? You you get that much lazier <laughs> just like, because of the weather? I'm like a cold-blooded animal, dude. Honestly, when you fart, it actually warms you up a little bit more, right? So, Merry Christmas. That Merry was for Christmas. You. That was your gift. Uh, thank you so much. You're a douchebag and I, I would like a better gift next year. Oh man! Oh, does that count? Has that guy? What's his name? Did he reach a hundred yet? No, not yet. Um, Peyton Page. Peyton Page. Uh, I don't think that counts, but that's fine. Uh, for some context, the listener for the listeners out there that don't know, Peyton Page is a, a listener that just comments on every single video. We didn't. We haven't even. We, hi, everybody! Welcome, welcome, welcome! Merry yes, Christmas! Horse. Everything. Ugh. It's just a lot. I mean, like this year has been quite a year. Um, moved studios. Um, moved lives. Moved lives. You got a new a face. Mm-hmm. You. Uh, I got a boob job. You got your boobs done. I had the Brazilian butt lift done. Mm-hmm. You got your knees done. Yeah. So you're a little bit shorter now. I yeah. I was nobody's too noticed. Tall. But yeah. I felt bad for other Filipinos that were shorter than me because I'm like technically tall for a Filipino. It was a good choice because it's it's not perceptible to the eye, Mm-mm. but you're like, oh, in, Christian looks better. It's like it's like. So subtle, it's like, oh, did Christian do something with his hair? Because it looks good. Mm. It's one of those kind of subtleties. Like, no, no, that's his hairstyle. That's what he does normally. Really, I paid a $30,000 fee for a surgery that made me three centimeters shorter. The scars are worth it, bro. Um, I wish I was as tall as you. Well, that's not my control. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. I hear you you and last week we were hanging out with your friend Danby, and you guys are making some comments about my height. Yeah. And they're very complimentive, but also like... I, I, you take height compliments like insults. Like, well, it's not. I mean, I didn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. And I then mean, you guys are like, you're so tall. And it's like, it's, it's you not had really, zero it's, control it's over a it. Thing. It's not even a thing. No, yeah. you drank a lot of milk growing up, right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I love milk. You still drink milk? Uh, I had milk yesterday. I Just had milk like, today. Straight from the cup? Straight, straight out of the, the carton, actually. Really? Because it's my milk, bro. No, that's weird. You share it with Karen. Does she not care? I mean, I guess you guys. She doesn't kiss. drink the milk. She drinks milk like maybe every once in a while. But it's my milk. Like I'm the only one who I'm. I'm the milk drink. And I'm it's like whole milk. milk. I like yeah, cold whole milk. If you live back in the day, you'd cold actually milk. have a milkman. Yeah, everybody had a milkman. You'd probably be the guy that had an affair with the milkman because you love milk that much. I would. I would want cheap milk at any price. You would. I'm just now smelling your fart. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> It smells so bad. <laughs> what did you? What did you, you said a burrito? Ah! Oh. Is it just? It's just getting there. Well, it was. I was at that. It was at that phase where I was like, Christian, either your breath stinks, <laughs> or your upper lip stinks, or I don't know something. And then I just realized that it was your fart, just like slowly traveling. <laughs> you. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Just all the doors be, are closed in this room. I'll be honest. That's why I apologized initially was because I could smell it. And I was like, oh, it's. I was hoping it wouldn't get to you, actually. that's You you smelled it first. Uh, you didn't even apologize. Like, usually people say, this is going to be a bad one. So prepare. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to out myself. It's okay. I'll just deal with the pink eye. It's, I didn't fart in your mouth. I know, but, you know. Heat rises and it'll eventually rise. In, um, I just saw a thing eyes. online and it reminded me of you that now when you flush your toilet, it's got a fucking a whole bunch of shit comes out of mm. it now. I've, um, with that being said, I'm really good now with closing the lid when I flush. I then you don't get to see it. What do you, what do you want to see? You don't get to see it go away. Why would you want to see it go away? You could just you like you could lift the lid and you can see that it's gone. I'm I'm not verifying that it's gone. I'm. Say my last goodbyes. <laughs> Say your last goodbyes when you close it. I don't know, man. I just, yeah, I guess I should close it. Like when you say bye to people that are leaving your home, do you like wait for them to walk to their car? Or do you like say bye and then once they turn around and start walking, you'll close the door? Because that's the same thing. <laughs> well, I don't treat my friends like shit. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, uh, <laughs> no, it's touché. different. Touche. <laughs> Touche. You're right. <laughs> The uh, shit is di- shit is shit. My friends are my friends. Um, no, I guess yeah, I should be closing the lid. You should be. Karen always closes the lid, but she also like just drops the lid. So it's like, Dunk! and, and I'm just oh, you like, guys have one one of those lids that just falls straight and up. So I'm always just like, um, I don't want to do it because I don't like that noise. Then slowly close it. I you don't, don't have to not, let gravity just, take or over. Just don't. 
You just don't close it? Leave it open, bro. I'm going to you... be back in 10 minutes anyways. You lift the toilet seat up when you pee? I sit when I pee. You know this. Oh, this is right. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. <laughs> you, know, you know I sit when I pee. I've My balls are that. too long. I've a... What? Hmm? Oh, yeah. You have long balls. Um, <laughs> so whenever you get up from the toilet, they're just damp. <laughs> I have to dab them. <laughs> um, I've, I've adopted that from you. You're City welcome. Fifty percent of the time, it'll it'll slowly take over your whole your whole my whole <laughs> your butthole. Oh, okay, <laughs> it'll slowly take over your whole life. Yeah, um, it's no. I think because not is in fine. public. I in public. I pee standing up still. As you should. Yeah. As you should. But like, in, unless I know I have time at an airport, I'll sit. If I'm in yeah, no rush. Yeah, you're right. Oh, you know what I've noticed that no one ever does is what? sit like on the complete toilet seat. You know what I mean. What? I always <laughs> what <do> you... <laughs> that, that... <laughs> I still smell your fart by the way. It's just like it's just chilling with us. <laughs> you'll you'll get used to it. You like the, so the toilet seat, right? I yep. always kind of sit near the edge. Yeah. I don't ever put my butt all the way to the back. I don't no one should put their butt. <laughs> like is... nobody sits in the whole toilet seat, you know what I mean? Cuz I feel like my butthole's too far back. I think you just have like an oddly placed butthole. <laughs> I, I might. It's on my back. You know how I know that some people like really utilize the entire seat? It's warm all the way back? Um, no, because I don't use the bathroom it. right after. I'm not p- pressing my face cheek against <laughs> like, oh, this is a fresh one. Someone's been here. <laughs> like a tracker in the woods. <laughs> not too long ago either. <laughs> um, They're uh, close. How I know Watch is me. that where at the back of the toilet seat it's still kind of moist from a crack <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah or some people some people just leave some hair behind like a, like an ass crack hair i tend to leave hair behind when i use it but you've seen i've seen have you you haven't you've done seen it my tracks i mean you only re- really use that bathroom I which i don't yeah in fact and i'll be honest that fart was a letdown for me because i was trying to save a poop for here because mm. i want to use your hose as you should. Okay, yeah. tell. Can you tell the listeners what I have installed in these bathrooms in my uh, new home? Well, Christian actually had all of his toilets removed, and we shit outside. And we <laughs> used the hose to. I was trying to connect all of my guests to my motherland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, no. Christian has. It's not even a bidet. It's literally just like a hose next to the toilet. Yeah. That come. Um, the water is very cold and very strong. It's connected to the toilet. Well, yeah. Where else is it going to get the water from? Yeah, you're right. I just but it, to... but the pressure is very strong though, so it's not just like connected to it. Like it's got a little something, something. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm scared to use it. It's powerful. It's intimidating. I mean, if you have a prolapsed asshole, I wouldn't put it straight on. Prolapsed. <laughs> I've never heard those two words put together. And, you don't know what one... that means. It's like when you like when you get like the when it's sticking out. Mm-hmm. I've seen it in certain videos that, <laughs> and then Documentaries. I usually stop it because i get freaked out some people uh, pay extra for those videos um i i don't want to if you're paying for porn at this point then you, you gotta figure be. it out No, you should be paying for porn you should give your money to those actresses they work very hard dude i was talking yes we should we should people we definitely should, should only fans fansly Whatever they're called. Yes, that I... Brazzers Plus. Support all of your adult performers. Disney Plus Plus. Do you remember the period of time where we were joking around about uploading this podcast to Pornhub? There's a lot of podcasts on Pornhub now. But I think they're porn-related podcasts. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Really? Yeah. Like, is there... Does Do porn websites have a... You know how YouTube will ban videos that are, like, too explicit? Will Pornhub There's no ban dicks. videos that are no not dicks explicit in this enough? Video. Right? Yeah, I, I, I mean... That would make sense. For every action, there's a equal or counter reaction. I don't know. I don't know, dude. Maybe we should try it. Again, I think it's done. I think it's been happening. What would you do if you started an OnlyFans? What would what's your what's your um? You know what? If I had an OnlyFans, it wouldn't be like a sexual one. It would be me reading books to people. Why is that? Well, I just think I think people would enjoy hearing me read like a Christmas Carol or you know Harry Potter or something. Mm. I could do the voices and stuff. Is this serious? You would actually do that? Yeah, I don't know. Were you joking? I, that's, I mean, because I'm not going to jerk off on OnlyFans. No, but let's say your I don't feet. Even like I thought usually people my, would say feet. My feet. Well, my, you have good feet? Uh, not right now. Why not right now? Uh, I, like, I, I hurt my toe a few months ago, so like the nail's still growing out. Like A few months ago and it's still growing. Yeah, it takes a while when you drop stuff on your toe, you know? like it's it, You got to push all that shit out. I have, I think part of my toenail's dying. Did you drop something on your toe? There's. Do you want to see it? I've never seen your feet or actually any part of your lower half. Actually, no, I'm scared to show you my toe. I don't know. I'm insecure now. 
It's you know what I I'm not a fan of feet. So I'll just describe I'm not it gonna to you. push you. We do you don't have to. That's fine. Yeah, just a part of the toenail is black, and it's like yeah. I don't remember dropping anything on it. It just started, but I feel everything. So you I don't think it's drop, like you probably you probably stubbed your toe or dropped it. Like it it ha- it's more common than you think. But it's been a few months. Yeah, because it probably bled underneath the nail. Oh, it might just be blood. Yeah, under the and, nail. and there's no way else to get it except for your nail to grow out. And unless you drink milk every day, your nails grow pretty slow. <laughs> Uh-huh, Milk makes uh-huh, the nails. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It does. It's the calcium, bro. But that shit will can... slow down my metabolism, though. That's just a bunch of liquid fat. Didn't slow down mine. No, yeah, you're right. Honestly, the amount that you work out, I think milk would be beneficial for you. Probably. Like you would probably like if you got like a good whole milk, and I'm not saying like drink a gallon of milk a week like mm-hmm. we did as kids, but like I, if you had like a, a, you know, a couple glasses like that of milk a week with the way that you work out, like I bet you your body would react. Pretty well to it. Like, I think your body... Or I'm just going to get fat again because Christian's drinking so much milk. But not with the amount that you work out. Yeah, you're right. You you could have a garbage diet with the, like, and not that you would because you you care about yourself. But, like, you could be eating hot dogs and pizza and, and, and shit all day and do the amount of workout you do and still not get fat. Like, you would just be consistent. I think I would be... I wouldn't get fat. I would just be a little softer, but I would be having a lot more muscle. Yes. Type of thing. But I want to be lean, man. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah, look yeah. like my brother. Well, just like, like, you know, pull the thing on the chair. My brother recently posted a picture of him after getting shwasted. Usually when you get, like, shwasted and you post, like, a mirror selfie, like, it's not pretty. But his was pretty? His was really pretty. And it's, like, good for him. It's And I, 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 want, I want to be that. You, you, you and your brother have different body types. Yeah. <laughs> I love the the comfort, the comfort from a best friend just saying, <laughs> "You guys just, you guys just build muscle differently." Well, I mean, you and believe it me, is true. Like, it is true, though. And, but you you should be striving for like the smart Hulk body, bro. I know. Still, one of like, my goals you, is to be smart. You shouldn't Hulk. be striving for like because your brother, his bone structure is different than yours. Yeah, you know what it's I mean? Always been. So it's like yeah. So don't I I, I would I would suggest. Not being, not being like I want that body because you just you won't look like that. Uh-huh. But just shattering my dreams. Right I'm now. sorry, and that's why I'm <laughs> de- that's why I'm stepping very delicately. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, you're like you're, try- you're like but, walking on eggshells. But that doesn't mean you can't have it because I think you have a great body. I'm not trying to Thank hit you. on you or anything. But Thank uh, you. You look. This is the prime of the way you've looked <laughs> in your whole life. Thank you. Um, but I think again, I think if you're striving for a, a person's goal, like um, who do you want to look like? Um, fucking Brad Pitt and Fight Club, dude. Oh yeah, you've said this before. No, I'm gonna look like Burt Kreischer in 2008. Burt Kreischer in 2008 was still fat. (laughs) He's still just very. Right now, I'm pretty sure his health issues are like very. I think he's healthy, but he's just fat. Has he gotten surgery? For what? His eyes. I just feel like he's. He's like at that. I don't know, because like, I hear things about like how he drinks a glass of wine on the I treadmill. I do hear he drinks a lot. He's a he's a drinker. Yeah, I'm. I'm like I don't know the guy. Obviously, I don't know he the guy. He does sober October every year. He does. Yeah, he, him and like uh, Tom Segura and with Joe Rogan. Yeah. But I don't know, dude. Like I, I know that like we have our drinks and we have our fun, but Jesus Christ, like we're not having rock star comedian on the road. Yeah, fun. yeah. I might have a night like that, and then I'm recovering for like three days. How, do you notice that, like, if you get like hammered nowadays, that it really takes a toll on you now? Um, yeah, I've definitely noticed that. Like, uh, it's definitely harder to work shifts hungover. Yeah, like I used to be able to work. I, I wouldn't get hungover. I you could would be I, able to bounce back. I could like be partying until four a.m. and then go in for the day shift and be good. I've been trying to be like a good, responsible drunk lately by drinking water. Um, drinking water. Well, more so, it's just Melissa asking just telling consent. me to like uh, asking for what? What consent? For my fiance, that's being a more considerable joke. And also, you should still ask for consent, even if she's your fucking hey. wife. <laughs> Don't Bro. fucking gaslight me, dude. <laughs> well, like walking drunk, and like <laughs> she like grabs my dick, and I still say, "Is this okay?" <laughs> I mean, yes. Also, she should be asking before she grabs your dick. She should ask me for consent. Do you like this, babe? Yes. Do you realize how many times I could, if we're trying to be progressive, do you know how many times I could like clap back at people that just scooped my tits and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. These are still boobs. I'm still a person. You got to ask first. And I think you should start making a list. 
Oh, make a list of people that have crossed Who've wronged me. you. It, this dates back all the way to like the fifth grade. Let's not go too far back. Here. It's the longest list. Let's not go that I, far back. I had man boobs that that long ago. Now you have man boobs. Back then you had like fourteen year old girl boobs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was the worst? You know, like getting was titties. getting aroused by your own tits. Like what? what? <laughs> Just shaking in front of the mirror. <laughs> yeah, you got it, Daddy. <laughs> you got it, Daddy. I'm a duck, tautin, baby. I can do it with my buns. <laughs> oh, that's from Adventure Time. Uh-huh. Um, what was the worst? Was like not just like the the boob scoop, but was the boob scoop and dunk. <laughs> it was like really the cherry on top of like you're a fat boy. <laughs> Bean dip. <laughs> Don't you remember call, that? Stop coming up with terms. This is all triggering. <laughs> this is traumatic. Bean dip. Because I was fine with this in high school because I wanted to be friends with people. You were like, please touch my boobs. I was just like, haha, yeah, it's funny because I'm Anyone fat. else? Anyone else want to do the bean dip thing? I mean, it was equivalent <laughs> to like um, the truffle shuffle. Yes. Can you do the truffle shuffle? I mean, I Yeah. Show us. I don't want to do it now. I'm insecure it's about it. it's Christmas time. I understand. What does that mean? I don't know. I always think that's more of a Halloween movie. Oh, it has nothing to do with the seasons. It has everything to do with my like my body dysmorphia. Yeah. I did used to do this thing where um and all, <laughs> um all of my uh like Greg Sunga and Jason and Alan, they would all love it. They'd be like, do the thing, do the thing. I'm like, I knew exactly what it was. And I would use my shirt to like cup my stomach. And I would scoop it up, you know, like the boob drop with like a girl like does a boob drop. But I would do that same thing, but with like <laughs> my stomach and they would laugh so hard. And I was so happy to make them laugh. I have friends. I have friends. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I do that too, bro. Don't feel you're not special. Do you do that for yeah. Karen? Not for Karen, for me. I like to play with my little belly. Do you look in the mirror and you just play with your belly now? Yeah, it's, that's my uh, tough talk. <laughs> You're tough, talk. You see this shit, you fat fuck? <laughs> you like this, you bitch? You've lost some weight. No, I haven't. You have. I have not. No, I've seen you. I've seen you bigger. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> it's hard to give you a compliment. Well, I mean, I said thank you. I think it's your metabolism. I think you 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 can bounce back pretty easy. Uh, not when you sound like that. You sound like uh, you sound. That's what it is. <laughs> you sound like you need. No, it's a all the CPAP. mountains and mountains of cocaine I'm doing. That's why I'm so skinny. Mm. And the so heroin. I'm trying to bring back heroin chic. You're uh, heroin chic, and you're also like a. Uh, uh, I just like the coke slim. Yeah, I'm coke slim, but with like really gaunt eyes, mm-hmm. and uh, my skin's turning yellow. You look pretty. You look healthy. Uh, I feel. I mean, I'm fine. Everyone could. I mean, yeah, everyone could be doing better, right? Do so you think there's gonna be a day where it's just like, like when you're on your 42nd birthday, you're just gonna be like look in the mirror and just be like, oh, it all hit me at once. Or do you think you're no, going to gradually see, age? I can see the slow. Uh, I can see it slowly ramping up already. But I'm just like, well, I'm fucking here already. Mm. I'm on the off ramp. I might as well. Uh, I bought the ticket. What's your favorite part about yourself? Of oh. your physical self that you think was just just going to last forever? My hair. I think your hairline is just going to be like you have a lines mane. Like for listeners out there that are just listening to this in your car, you hop on YouTube and look at that goddamn. I got a mane, mane right now. You do. Karen hates it. Karen wants me to cut it. She doesn't like it. She doesn't want to pull, tug on it? You know I don't let people touch my hair. With consent. <laughs> I wouldn't let people touch my hair anyways. <laughs> yeah, just, I've never just, touched your hair. It's just long, and like I'm not doing anything with it right now, and it and it's like just now vaguely looking okay in its length. Like It mm. was in a very weird phase, like most people's hair is when you're growing it out. A medium phase. I'm not even like intentionally growing it out. I'm just too lazy to go get it cut. Mm. At least it looks good, because if I grew my hair out that long, it wouldn't look right. Would your hair lay down, or would it constantly still go up like I, an afro? No, I think it would just constantly go up. Like I puff. think like the sides of my hair would keep going and keep going like a chia pet. Eventually, it would fall, but it would still be, I don't know, dude, and I don't want to find out. I do like that my little gray patch is now, because my hair is so long, the gray hairs are like this long. It's kind of cool. I think it's funny to see long gray hairs. Yeah. You're going to look like um Mr. Fantastic, you know? It's like God, a I hope so. Streak. Yeah. I hope that like when I go, I'll die it. I'll fake it. I don't give a fuck. Go, you you would look good all platinum. I uh, that's I wouldn't go that far. No. My dad's not even all white. Oh, so it's gonna take you a long time. For yeah, your... my dad's been my dad's gray. Although my grandfather was all white pretty early on. 
Really? He lived a hard life, though. Who knows? It might be a little... Oh, so it's just the stress. That's what I... Isn't that what it is? Isn't that what gray hair, where gray hair comes from? Dude, I feel like gray hair comes from a lot of things. Do you know where I've been finding gray hair? In My the pubes? chest. Oh. No. Do people get gray... Does that, like... Pop up this early? Not no. I mean, I don't let my my I don't let those go long enough for me to find out. Uh, if I'm not cutting my hair on my head, I'm not cutting my hair on my hair on balls. <laughs> so it looks the same. <laughs> it's got to be consistent. <laughs> the 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 carpet does match the drapes. Always, bro. Always. No, nice. no, no, no. Balance. It, the life is about balance. Honestly, mm-hmm. you have gray chest hair. I have like one or two. I pulled one I, out. I have like now a, a, a grown man's. Um chest hair like i don't i'm not i don't look like you i'm so proud of you you got some chest hair you finally got some hair on my chest wow what did you do i just i would jerk off and just oh. rub my cum into my chest fertilizer that's <laughs> no that's the worst image ever <laughs> that's gross. i don't know why i said that. i don't ever want to come into your home uh, no. i don't ever want to touch any of your shirts if that's the case um no i i, I no, dude it just it is what it is bro it just it is what it is. I Finally come, I puberty. come on my chest, rub it in, <laughs> and it is what it is. <laughs> you fucking delinquent. In, in parts of the jungle, that's a sign of fertility, bro. It's so. a sign of dominance. <laughs> Making <laughs> eye contact. <laughs> Earlier today, you looked at one of Melissa's pugs and kept on saying, "I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> I'm gonna eat I was you." Like this too. Yum yum yum. Uh, num, num. And I'm the fucking Asian in the room. You literally looked at one of the dogs and said, "I'm gonna eat you." <laughs> I think um, dogs constantly need to have one friend that scares them. Why? Because dogs should have that fear, that dog in them. You know what I mean? That. But I think they get that from other dogs already. Sometimes. Yeah, I think I think both. But I'm also a dog. Oh, you are. I got that dog in me. I do love dogs. But then you can, yeah, you confuse you confused him because shortly afterwards he said, "I'm just kidding." Like he knows he knows the switch in tonality. They do know they don't know the words. They do know the switch in tonality. Now you're just confusing him. So he's just like, wait, wait, wait. I think your dog's just smarter than you give him credit for, pal. No, I think they're not. Yeah, Uh they are smart. Pugs were dogs of war, sir. I understand this. You're gaslighting me. I think I'm using the word gaslight right, and I think you're gaslighting me. Am no, I? I've, um, then I don't know if that would last one was gaslighting. Are we showing our age by not knowing what gaslighting means? No, I think we're just showing how fucking stupid we are. No, I um, think we're the two smartest people in this room. Did you also have a yearbook, or is that my can? You moved it out of the shot. That's my. It's your can, and I moved it out of the shot. Oh, okay. No, you're tripping for a little bit. I was. Have you heard anything about like liminal spaces? No. What is There's liminal spaces? Whole thing space? like on TikTok and Instagram where like. Um, you like kind of like let's say you're at like a shopping mall and you go through a door and then you're like kind of like lost mm-hmm. in the back rooms like the forever hallway. Yeah. Um, like it's pretty much like what your nightmare place is. Huh. What's your What's your nightmare place? Well, I mean, I just saw a liminal space where it was like this dude was in a bounce house and he unzipped the edge and went out and it was like an abandoned mall. Huh. And then he like couldn't find his way out and then the video ended, of course, because that's what these videos are. Of course. But um, but I'm like that's that's legitimately like nightmare fuel like you know like when you have a bad dream and you're like course. in an abandoned mall and you're like i can't find my-. have you been to like an empty mall like an abandoned mall no um, where can you even find an abandoned mall they're actually way more common than you would think um but in like there's only two or three malls around us here where we live mm-hmm. but when i was living in orange county there was a mall like a shopping mall in every city Especially like because in the eighties when that was where everybody hung out and shit like that, that they built one everywhere. Um, but then that stopped being the popular place to be, and so it shifted. But then they got abandoned, and all the department stores shut down, and they all pulled out. And so then they like shut their doors. There's no more KB Toys. There's no more JC Penney's. There's no more Sears. The whole place kind of dries up. BJ's leaves. There's no more cheesecake. You know what I mean? Like everything dries up. But there's still like one or two stores there, so the place is still open. And you walk Whoa. in, and you're just like. This is weird. It's fucking empty. Like, yeah, the chains, are, the things are down on all of them, except for like two. There's some guy changing phone And screens. you actually walked around this oh, yeah, place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, because I've never been... I had to find the store I was looking for. What was the store? It was like a board game, card game store. Can you imagine being a worker in there? That'd be fucking scary. And, and Especially at night? Mall. Yeah, or man. Or if it's raining? Yes. Mm. Um, I think a mall period when it's raining would well, be Well, do scary. you remember when we would go to Mirror Island and we would like... Uh, 
for you listeners out there, Mare Island has a, a huge chunk of it is abandoned, right? Because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What was it, a naval base or some shit it like that? It was a navy base, yeah. Um, and there's so many buildings there that are just abandoned. There's like specifically what I'm thinking, an unemployment center. Yeah, and the hospital. It, Remember, we used to go to the there's hospital. There's a hospital that we used to break into in high school. Not me. That Not, was the only building I wouldn't go into. You never went in? Never went into the hospital. It's the only one. I, the hospitals in the daytime freak me out, mm-hmm. let alone an abandoned one at night. Terrifying. After. And I don't know what it was about me to just be like, yes, I want to do this stupid thing. Because there's no way I would agree to it right now. It's just, it's when you're a kid in a small, we were kids in small towns with nothing to do and no money. Mm-hmm. What else was left, dude? It was creepy because we would go out like near midnight. But you know what? I think people in small towns and like that. I think going to creepy places is a thing kids do, right? Yeah. If you live in a place that has the woods, you're gonna go to the when you're a woods. teenager. You go into the woods. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but did you ever go to the junkyard behind my old neighborhood? The water's no, in the junkyard. Uh, no, but I've that's a smart decision too. The fact that you didn't. Uh, but I've been like back in that empty area. Yeah. Yeah, that's also terrifying to go to around midnight. Well, because of all the ghosts of the Zodiac Killers unsolved murders. Oh, you're giving me fucking uh, goosebumps. Oh, you're closer to the second one than you were to the first one. Stop, dude. This yeah, is... Blue Rock Springs Park's right over there. This is not scare the shit out of you. No, because actually, I think uh, I don't think the Zodiac Killer was one person. I think that's why they haven't they never solved it. A bunch of people. I think it was like I think it was uh, what? There's four, four, five. Benicia Vallejo. Lake Berryessa, San Francisco. I think there's four like Zodiac killer kills that are like these are the ones. But I think it was probably uh, two guys, maybe three guys, mm-hmm. um, all in cahoots but, with each other. No, but one guy did the last two. So I think the first because the weapon changed on every single one, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then the first one uh, was like uh, was a small handgun, and then he used a bigger handgun, and then the th- the one in Lake Berryessa, he used a knife. And was wearing like a mask and had like his symbol on his chest uh-huh. and shit. And like, so by the time he did the Lake Berryessa murder, he was reading the newspaper and like he had already had his stuff published in the San Francisco Chronicle. And like, so I think somebody was like, I could be a better Zodiac killer than the. Than and was just copying is. their shit. Yeah. And tried to do it probably better. Probably a cop. I think it was also, I think he also probably was a cop. Oh, is that one of the conspiracies? Is that. Dude, I don't know. That's scary. It's, it, and it's also, it's, it's like Jack the Ripper. Now there's so many stories and theories and it, it could be anything. What are you doing in that situation where you think you're going to get killed? Like, what is your instinct to get out? So I actually heard something not too long ago that actually kind of like opened, my, gave me a good idea of what to do. Like, um, at my at my last job at the restaurant and the, at the bar mm-hmm. was not in the best place in Vallejo. It was kind of a seedier place. And like, one of the things I had always mentally prepared myself for was like getting stuck up. Like if somebody came in and tried to take the money, um, you know, I would give it to them. But I thought, here's what I would say. And it's only if they have a gun in your face and if they look scared um, because scared people will shoot. But it would be like, I'd say something along the lines of people like, look, man, I, I don't want to die today over X amount of money. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the money, but I need you to not, you know. Don't kill me. Yeah. And then and then I'm just going to just, just go from there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I, I mean, everyone always says like, oh, I'd be the hero, bro. I'd take the gun from them and beat them up and like. Try to do the move that we always see in movies. Where yeah, I mean, I guess face. I would, but that can't be your first reaction because that's going to get you killed you know what i mean like you gotta you gotta play it smart the goal is to get out of there alive Mm -hmm. right and then um i I really thought you were gonna say i'm gonna kiss them (laughs) i I mean (laughs) but the the only reason why i didn't have a silly answer for that is because i was literally just thinking about this and was like oh yeah i mean i wouldn't like i you have to like empathize with them what's the other one that i just heard somebody doing of like if you get if you're getting like um someone like pulls a knife on you in an alley in new york Mm -hmm. or something right uh, one of the things you should say is like, I just I'm just on my way home to see my daughter. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow! Like, please, uh, please, I just want to go home and see my daughter. Wow! So they can really empathize because with you. you know the person is uh, like the idea would be like you know the person struggling like they don't want to make things worse and now you're putting in this story in their head of oh he's got a daughter like he's trying to and like you know I just I just want to go home to my daughter and like you can't say I want to go home to my wife or my girlfriend like that that's that's easy for him to be like oh, fuck her or like whatever. whatever it is but like but it, it's got to be like. I just want to go home to my daughter. Every daughter needs their. And then it's like, parent. and it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that, that this probably won't work for women. Yeah. If you're a woman, you're probably fucked. You should take some self-defense classes. Um, but everybody should. Everybody yeah. should know how to throw a punch. Yeah. And know how to get punched. Yeah. That's more important than knowing how to fight. So knowing how Dude, to. Dude, no, I mean, I'm sure. Like, like I keep telling you, I've never been punched in the face before. No, Jules punched you. 
Uh, no, that what that happened. If I still have a picture of my of, your <laughs> of cool my fucked shiner. up face, um, we were wrestling, and homegirl has thunder thighs, and pinned me down with her legs with my she, face against the carpet. The, she was doing the watermelon squeeze, dude. She was doing an anaconda squeeze or some shit, and she like China. Remember China? China was a thick girl, dude. Who eventually she ended up doing porn. Right? Yeah, yeah, she won awards for it. Whoa, well, she won awards. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, uh, but Juliet, yeah, she smash used her legs her to like smash my head to the carpet, and like me trying to get out of it, like got a oh, rug that's burn. Right, that's right. Well, hey, you know, one day it, it, it'll happen. I'm an equal opportunist. I mean, if it, if it happens from if that's my 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 quote unquote shiner. I'll get it from uh, Juliet. You, you know what would be fun is like, especially I think as we're getting into like our thirties and stuff, mm. uh, is if we tried like doing like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for like six months, or like yeah. tried going to like a, a boxing gym for six months. We're not going there to like get belts. We're not trying to like do any kind of like, but the the health benefits of working out and like just having that kind of like um, different style of workout. You know what I mean? I think that'd be fucking fun. What would you want to learn specifically? I, I've always wanted to go back to a boxing gym. Ever ah. since, I, like, I've always talked to like our friend Tyler, who has one here in Vallejo. Um, I've always thought of like that's that. I don't again. I I don't want to fight people anymore. I'm not there to like, uh, you know, to even like spar or anything. But like just the the working out, the endurance that you would gain, and like. Mm-hmm. You know, and to just have that kind of self defense, like like punching mitts is always fun. It's like yeah. anybody, even if you don't know what you're doing, like it's fun to like hit mitts, and like it always mm-hmm. makes you feel really good. And like, yeah, dude, that that's one of the reasons. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm not working out because I haven't found like a fun workout for me to want to do and shit like that. That makes sense. Maybe like yeah, when you get back into the thing, you should probably take a boxing class. Or I got to like do that. something, something. Yeah, my joke answer would be capoeira because like I would love to be that flowy and free and like you know almost dancing, right? But, I, but it is. It's like specifically dance fighting. Mm-hmm. Um. But I feel like you couldn't just do capoeira for fun, though, Mm-mm. right? Like you could go to a boxing gym. You'd have to be serious. Yeah. You'd actually have to be like and you'd with have to anything, have, and you'd have to have like some background training to get to that point. Like you don't just start at mm-hmm. at that. Uh, another joke answer would be sumo wrestling. Can you imagine like me getting mugged and me just like whoo, whoo, slapping my thighs, throwing the sand in the air, <laughs> throwing sand in their eyes. <laughs> And then doing it. Um, yeah, did you ever do like one of those kickboxing cardio classes? Did you ever do anything like that? Yeah, those I are, did. Those are fun. Those are really. Intense. Oh, you've done it before? Yeah, bro. I worked at Orange State Fitness. That's like I've right. done all the fitness. Like I've gone to other gyms and taken classes and shit. I've done them all. So fun. I've when done you learn the, the combo classes and shit. Yeah, dude. But it's like it's just like fucking jazzercise. Yeah, yeah. It's jazzercise with more punches. It's. It's jazzercise, but it's way a cooler. It's jazzercise. Yeah, man. And like something they could actually apply. So now I know like the difference between like a- A jab and a What's hook? the other one? Yeah, a jab and a hook. And then like throwing Cross. in like a, a good kick and hearing how loud the bag makes, the sound, how loud of a sound the bag makes when you give it a good kick. Yeah. Yep. Solid. Yeah. It's just I, expensive. Uh, yeah, any everything's fucking expensive. Dude, I bought a fucking half a basket of groceries today. It was 60 bucks. We're not going into this. Yep. We're not talking, but yep. just saying, everything fucking sucks. Just Then bullets keep getting more expensive. Um, that is true, but... <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, you know, I think any martial art is important for people to, to do because it, it gives you that opportunity to balance and breathe and yeah. be around and sweat and bleed and do all well that just shit. like anything i think it's a healthy outlet to like relieve stress if you're just fucking going through it right like if if working out if not if going on a treadmill or if running outside ain't doing it for you to like relieve some stress why not put into something that like you could release your anger into and that's is actually beneficial to something like self-defense because you never know and i feel like that's something that's probably important for me because like even though i've grown up my entire life of being a nice guy i'm unaware if i'm going to get rolled up on because i'm a nice guy well yeah and that's the thing I th- that my parents always taught me was like it's not about you being nice or uh-huh. you being mean it's just it's about, about being confident and protecting yourself yeah you know what and I protecting mean? others like the people that you love yes dude because like imagine like if one of our if one of our ladies just like we're in a situation and uh, around us like we have to i don't well, care i've been in that situation you know that oh i know you've been so, in that situation and I truly do like I I do adore that about you the fact that like you've uh, stepped up to the plate and you're like yeah don't uh, you you saw that your significant other was in uh, danger and was in a very uncomfortable situation so you fucking did the thing and I get scared about the moment thinking about like who and what type of person am I gonna be when uh, 
when when shit hits the fan. And I love to believe that I'm going to get. I will take a thousand and one bullets protecting Melissa. Sure. Um, but not a thousand and two. <laughs> well, that's that uh, that thousand and second one. I'm like you're on your own, I, I'll t- honey. I'll, t- I'll tell you right now why I've done that in the past. Well, one for sure. I when I was younger and fought, gotten bar fights and shit like that. It's because mm-hmm. I was a very um, insecure man. I right? didn't yeah. know where my footing was as a man. Um, but also. Uh, you know, growing up, I thought, uh, uh, I believed in like this moral code, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also was trumped up on gangster films and yeah. having a big brother that taught me, you know, not to take wrong. And I grew up reading comic books, which didn't stand for injustice. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just all those things kind of got together and, um, and, and then, you know, I find myself in an opportunity and now that I've been in the opportunity a couple of times, I can kind of like recognize it and see, um, you know, there was a point when I was pretty quick to lose my temper and stuff. And now when I get to that point, I can, I, I, there's times in my brain where I like have the moment being like, Oh no, I could actually probably yell at this person. I could probably yell at this person right now and like really get everything off my chest and, and be okay with it because you know what? It's it just, it is what it is today. They're going to get it. You know what I mean? That sounds really kind of fucked up. No, but but, but like I, I can, as opposed to like just blowing up on anybody or something stupid. I guess I don't, I don't even really do that anymore either. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. I'm no, just kind of talking I, I, about- I from my observations, if I may, it's like I think that you've shifted your objectives when your emotions do become aroused. Right? I think before, like you just said, it probably came from like insecurities and whatnot and those bar fights came from you not being sure from you trying to you're being protective now it's more of like you're, you've matured is well, all I think it is I, I think i've always been protective i think i've just but matured into a different way of pr- being protective yeah but let's say like more like let's say if you were to be like upset or aggressive now it's more solely for protection as opposed to trying to uh more for yourself that's what i disagree with i think in the past it was uh, because I've had this discussion with my therapist. It's like uh-huh. a lot of those fights I got in because I felt like I needed to protect somebody or something. Mm. Right? It's always that. So I feel like I have to stand up for somebody or something. So what is it now? Like when you now when you feel well, like I've, I've learned, I've grown, I've learned, right? I mean, I w- did this because I thought my brother was, this is what my brother would do. This is how Matt would handle the situation. And then, mm-hmm. you know, f- fairly recently, I, I made the realization and learned like that's not who Matt was at all. Matt never has gotten a fight in his entire fucking life. Matt mm-hmm. actively avoided fights his whole life. And I can think of like three or four fights in my head where like the last thought in my head was Matt would do this. Mm-hmm. And like, no, no fucking way. Yeah. What would he say? Like, would you tell him about the altercations you would be in and would um, he like respond a certain way? <clears throat> you know, when I was living in Orange County and getting drunk and being stupid and living on my own, it's probably when that was happening the most. It's yeah. probably like the most fights in a one year, two year period. And that, I'm talking like three or four. Like, it's not like I was getting in fights every weekend because I'm not like that. And I'm not saying this. It's not cool. Yeah. Violence is never the answer unless the guy's a dick. Um, <laughs> but I know I wouldn't like call him back. Ah, got another one, Matt. Like, mm-hmm. here's the video. Tell me what I like. I know I never did any of that um, because I also like never felt like bragging about these things. I never wanted to be the guy. Who's, like, I don't know if it came up, it came up. People would ask me, and I tell them. People, people want to try and s- step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. Then they're gonna well, not fuck even to like, find out. Not know. even to brag about because like I think. It maybe came was... off as bragging to me. That's why maybe I didn't like talking. Even oh, now talking about it, I feel like it's coming off as like, because yeah. I know there's guys out there who who could see this and watch this and be like, bro, bro, I could beat his ass. Sure. Yeah. And it's like, that's not what I'm trying to do here. That's not what I'm talking about here at all. Well, because like, I know that if I ever were to get in a fight, it's solely will be for either self-defense or to protect another, right? I never want to be. I don't, I don't, I'm not craving the feeling of it. Um, but uh, in terms of, not bragging about it, but like I always update my brother on things, and I feel like that's something that I would like seek his advice from. Like, was I in the right? For, um, in this situation, was I in the right? Was I in the wrong? And like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, but don't you think no matter what happens when you tell the story, you're gonna put yourself in the good light? Like, I think about that. Like, in a, in a for an easy example, like uh, when your girlfriend or your fiance is complaining about some like whatever argument you were just in mm-hmm. to her friends or family or whatever. I, I mean, it's. I struggle to see how their friends would be on our side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so 
and and to a point maybe that's why I wouldn't bring it up because it's like of course I'm gonna be like and then he he spit on this girl so what was I gonna do not not punch him in the face right like yeah. that's just kind of how the story ends up when in real life you know it's maybe not as easy as that or or it's you know I've definitely been in the wrong I've definitely gotten in fights for for sure wrong reasons when you get in the wrong now let's say like you now. If you were to be in the wrong, how much easier is it? How easy is it for you to admit that you were in the wrong? Uh, never. Never? Never give up. Never surrender, bro. <laughs> Fuck that. Defend, when, defend your if pride. I'm making, if I've made a mistake this bad and we're getting, we're going, to, we're fighting over it. Yeah. Right? I, I, I'm fighting believing that I'm, st- I don't care, man. But then like. Kennedy was the fifth president. <laughs> let's say after the fight and your emotions kind of like go away and you're laying in bed, do you like exhale once and you're like, maybe I should tell that person that I was in the wrong. I should say sorry. Not even. Um, you hold, well, do you hold on to like, well, I'm going to win. That, that's different. That's different. Because a fight where I'm thinking about it later and like reflecting on it and like I should apologize and make something different. It's probably somebody that I know and I come in contact with a lot. And mm-hmm. that's didn't, that wouldn't have been a physical altercation. Then. Mm-hmm. If it's a bar fight with somebody, fuck that guy. That's different. That's yeah, different. I'm never going to apologize. I'm never going to give up. Even if I see that guy again and it's fine. Like if that's a friend of a friend and it sh- and he shows up again, like it's, it's, it's just not, it's just over. It's been there, done that it's, it's, it's been done. Cause I'm um, trying to get good at like with, with, people that I don't give a fuck let's say it's strangers or and especially people that I love if I get into like uh into a heated argument or debate or just a disagreement I'm really trying to take a step back and be like if Christian if you're wrong just admit that you're wrong so that we could like rip sure. this band-aid off quick I'm trying to get really good at it which is why like when Melissa and I get in a fight now I I try to say like Hey, I don't want to talk right now. Let me step out of the room because I'm emotional and I want to. I might say something I don't mean. I hear that's a really good trick. Actually, you're like the second or third person that I've heard that. Dude, trick it's fucking yeah, awesome. It's good. it's good. Even though she's like, she's like the one that says like, I want to talk about it right of now. Of course, of course. But it's the healthiest decision. Um, it's really interesting that you that you know you say something uh, like that because you know when when you're emotional and and in a moment like that, right and, and you do realize you're wrong. Um, I guess my, I, I guess when when we brought up this topic, right? You you said you're trying to get better at that moment, or what? You're trying to get better at like if you were wrong, coming back and apologizing. What is it that you're trying to get better at? What I just said right now. Yeah, taking that, mo- being more conscious to take the moment, or what? Try oh, like right before that, trying to be <clears throat> more aware that if I'm in the wrong, uh, to admit it, right? To like really uh set my pride aside. And like really look at the situation objectively, not more so emotionally, which I can only really do if I step away, yeah. literally step away from what the situation, go into another room, go for a walk, and then come back when my emotions aren't really blurring my words so that I could just be like, hey, I, what Melissa and I have gotten really good at uh, is just saying like, whoever says sorry first we've usually loses. say i'm all <laughs> loses and the other gotcha, person has bitch. to wash the fucking dishes uh no the other person usually always says it's okay i'm sorry too and regardless of who was wrong or who was right if we both know that we handled that situation maybe poorly and kind of like raised our voices a little bit or said something a little out of pocket it that's probably the thing that kind of heals it the quickest interesting I'm not saying that like I, I truly am far away from perfect in terms of like communication because I'm still too nice and I'm still at the same time very prideful and I get defensive when I think I'm in the wrong because I'm used to being uh, I'm used to being in the right because I am the nice guy. You see how that's kind of like a vicious circle? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know, dude. It's a lot. It's interesting, you know, because my brother asked me too just this last time I saw him um, over Thanksgiving. Was he, you know, he asked me, he's like, I don't understand how you like, just don't give a fuck about certain things. Like how I, how I am, how I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I just like, it's weird. First of all, it's weird that you think I'm good at that because I think I'm not that good at that because, you know, I'm in my own head about it. And I'm like, I'm still thinking about this shit, mm-hmm. you know, weeks later. Uh, but then also I do know, like there are times I'm just like, fuck that, fuck that person, fuck that thing, fuck that thought, like on to the next thing. You know, I remember one time my mom pointed out to me when I was like 17 or 18. She's like, you're the only you're one of the only people I know who's so quick to cut people out. And then that's it. No second chances. No nothing like if I, and that's true. Like if I'm done with somebody, I'm done with somebody. 
Um, there was a guy who I was working with, and like there was a couple of chances where I felt like he was um, like taking advantage of my kindness. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then like it, it just, and then when it came to the point where I was like, all right, well, I'm done. And it just, I was literally was just done, just washed my hands of him and was just like, all right, fuck it, dude. I guess I'm not going to get that 40 bucks back. I guess he, I guess it just, it is what it is. Um, and like, and then he would still like hit me up and stuff and like trying to hang out and be cool and stuff. And I was like, no, dude, like maybe you don't get it, but I get it. Like you, 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 mis- you mistake my kindness for weakness and I don't give second chances for that shit. You know, I don't, I don't fuck around with that. That's just how I am. Again, a mixture of Vince Vaughn movies, gangster films, and uh-huh. you know, the kind of man that I was raised thinking I was gonna be, Humphrey Bogart and Ace Ventura put together. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so that is an example of you just like not giving a fuck if someone crosses you, if someone betrays you, right? True, um, betrays me, he betrayed, betrayed me. you. But like, what's the other end? You, the, you've obviously like matured to be more not forgiving but to be more i guess emotionally aware and to be like to i think it's just that i think i'm just more emotionally aware i think i've gone through a quite a bit of therapy and i'm i mean and even like you you know you mentioned it a couple months ago it's like i am very sensitive and emotional right now more than i ever have been in in my life yeah um good and bad and i see it in both good and bad ways multiple times you know what i mean and it's just like um you know because I've noticed that with you, too, and I think you going through this, like, uh, through this maturity, this growth of maturity is, like, also making me, making me change for the better, too. Because, like, now it's changing the way that we communicate with each other Yeah. as a whole. Like, if we were to take, like, the beginning of this podcast three years ago and, like, how we communicated with each other was completely different. Our dynamic was completely different. And now it's really matured and grown. Of course. Has grown into this, like, I would say a very beautiful thing. Because, like, now, like, as much as we have a lack of filter with each other when we're fucking around and we're joking around Mm -hmm. and we're just able to shoot the shit, we also have created a filter because of being considerate of each other's feelings. So, like, now, like, when I communicate with you, like it's not just like, oh, I'm talking to Alejandro. We're far more aware of what's being said and yeah. what's being received. Yeah, because like I think in the past I was able to like, um, or like even just like in the past two years I was able to just like feel like I could just say anything to you because like, oh, because Alejandro said like this stuff to me in the past, like he should be able to like handle what I could dish back, which is true to a certain degree. Yeah, and I, and I was probably re- I was really good at it. I you know I know I, I'm I'm different now. But now it's just like it's a. Uh... Well, see, and then let me ask you this question because that's a really interesting point. Is I, I, one of the things I'm struggling with. Didn't expect the Christmas episode to get this deep, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I'm struggling with right now is like, is this a a better person, and b is this the per- is this the person that I am now? You know what I mean? Am I just gonna be this kind of emotional sensitive person, which to be 100 percent honest, I've always been. But mm-hmm. I just masked it and covered it with so many things and got so used to hiding it and, and and I've gotten to the point where like I don't want to anymore, I don't care anymore, and it's also like it's it's fucking with me when I do. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's like um Are those questions for me or are those questions for you? I guess both. I, they're the questions I ask myself and I don't have answers for. Because I mean, because like is that a better person is like a very weird question because like Whatever you are, whatever journey you go through, as cliche is. as that is, um, or like, what, yeah, it's. Um, well, go ahead. I'm just a uh, no. I'm appreciative of the growth, dude. Thank you, and I appreciate you know the acknowledgement of it because it's hard to tell when you when you know when when I'm struggling with you know my my mental health and stuff like that. It's always kind of tough to see what's going on, and and I think I have a. I always have a tough time of like, you know, when I try to go to people and tell them, you know, when I'm struggling or when I'm having a tough time and, you know, the immediate response is always like, well, I, like, you know, like, well, your life is so good. And people like point out all these good points and like, like, you shouldn't feel bad and stuff. And it's like, uh, for me, it's always like, oh, I know those things. Like, I know those, all those things are good. And I know I should be really happy by those things. But the reason why I'm telling you, like, I'm still unhappy is because like, I'm thinking of all those things and I'm still fucking, I'm still fucked up. You know yeah, what I mean? I still hate yeah. this shit. Um, so I, I, I just, I, I think... <clears throat> You know, I can see myself changing and growing and being different. Um, and maybe I'm just not um, ready for the change, but it just it comes whether you like it or not. I think to answer your questions, 
if they're directed for both you and I, um, for you being a better person, or is this a better person of yourself to just what you are now? I think yes, of course, because I think any ver- any version of yourself where you are less masked, where mm. you are you are authentic self, then that's the person to lean into, because at least when you're navigating the real world as your real self, and you run into real problems, you'll be able to grow constructively with you know a real type of trial and error, you know, rather than so. like yeah. that the situation went poorly. Because I I went into it masked, I went into it filtered, I went into it with this facade, right? Because you're guarding something. How will you know what to fix if like you went into that as not your real self? I mean, yeah, that's probably just a lesson to like. You probably should have gone into that like as your as uh, as a fake version of yourself. So yes, I love that. Like when if I love that if you're sensitive and you're feeling hurt, fucking be sensitive, be hurt, dude. That's that's truly how it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to be, and luckily, you know, I thank God I have Karen who like understands this and gets it, and you know, mm-hmm. is willing to let me grow and make my mistakes and shit like that. And yeah. I, I can tell when I'm acting differently and when I um am different as like a person. Like I can tell I'm different. I mean, you don't even have to look too far, too back, you know, too many episodes to see a difference. You know, the yeah. further the further you go back, the bigger difference. I think you can see me in particular. Mm-hmm. Um. Just because, oddly enough, this podcast came at a really weird time for me in my life where it was like a lot of change and shit. And You'd just come back from Irvine, man. You'd just hurt yourself. No, it was way, way after that, dude. It was when we oh, started the podcast. You, yeah, right. yeah, it was when, when Shannon was leaving. and Because th- I remember this being one of the reasons. I was like, look, Shannon's leaving. She's not coming back. I need something that's going to fill my time and give me something to do and mm-hmm. like really drive. And this was one of the things that we had always talked about. And stuff. Boom, improv team. Gave During, us something through to do. improv. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I remember the first few episodes of us trying, like you know, um, I don't know. I yeah, I'm just in. I think we, when you come to the end of the year, you get very reflective. Of course, as most people do. Yeah, it's all I've been lately. Um, and I'm just, I just, um, it's just a, it's just a tough end. It's a, it's a tough end for the year. You know, yeah. it's, it's an end. It's um, what's tough about it? Uh, everybody's, you know, everybody's struggling. Everyone's going yeah. through their own things. I mean, I, um, I, I just recently lost my job, and you know, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get back on my feet and get that stuff going. And yeah. you know, I'm yeah. trying to get through school, and I'm not a good student. I'm seeing that now. It's like it. it I'm just not a good student. Mm-hmm. Um, but is, this is important to me, and it's you know, I, I know, through. I know what I got to do, and. I, you know, I see the the mistakes that I'm making. I see the things that I'm not doing, the things that I should be doing, and I'm it. it, it just, I just, I just. Um, For whatever help it may be, I, I think about you a lot. I think about you a lot, and I'm always proud. Like as it, like this past year, very proud, very proud of how far you've come. Thank you. And like everything, dude. Like I, I, and I know you look at, I know you look at situations a bit differently than I do. But so take this from me, who's it like more of like an outsider slash insider, of looking in, right, and within, because uh, you know I see you so often that I know so much about you. But I'm like, you could figure if you saw me do something, you could figure out what my thought process. Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. If I make a decision, you can be like, I, unless it's a crazy out-of-pocket decision, I think 90% of the decisions I make- <laughs> Even be those like, decisions, I see how you get there because see. it's out-of-pocket. Oh, it's here's where like, he took the left turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I'm editing these episodes and I see like where your thought process is, because like a lot of like, um, let's say your episode with Anusha, like I'm currently editing, um, and I see like your, your like um, under the breath type jokes, which I will <laughs> cut the camera to, right? Sure. So that like the listeners could still get it, even if it's like while- Anusha saying something, I'll be like, "Oh, I see how you got there," and I really appreciate that. I really do Thank like you. that. Yeah, no, and like, I just want you to—I just want to tell you, like, that shit doesn't go unnoticed, man. Well, thank. I mean, thank you. That's it's it's. I know I'm doing what's supposed to be done, and I and I know I'm putting in the work, and but I think everybody wants to do better and be better, right? And yes. I think that's just what I'm going through right now, and yeah. um. I'm just not making a difference. I'm not making a change, which is also frustrating. Um, but some of these things are kind of like recent too. So 
Yeah. Give yourself some time. But I mean, yes, and that's what the fucking holidays. That's what some people say. Yeah. And the other half says like, well, you know, there's no better time than right now to get on it, and I'm and I'm caught in the middle, and I'm just like, what if I just fucking um, sleep all day instead? Oh god. (laughs) I mean, you know, I was there earlier this year. Yeah, I mean, sleep all day. Yeah, yeah. We both have gone through it, and we both have had you know pretty tough years, but I think I think of growth wise. We both have gone through quite a bit of growth this year, and uh, yeah. it's it's pretty. Excuse me, it's pretty obvious that um, we're not the kids that started the podcast. No, dude, I truly like. I don't ever want to listen to an old ass episode. And if listeners that have made it this far, like hear this, they'll probably like check out Murder Mystery or like well, and just I was, friends. I was just thinking this the other day. I was like, you know, if we get, how do we get back to like what we were? But it's like we can't even do that really right now anymore no. like our show has become something so different like we can with it can't be that bad when we do films and stuff like that but for the most part you know highly irrelevant and this connection and these kind of talks and stuff is what is its own thing like some like a lot of my favorite my favorite episodes everyone's just you and me truly you and me and yeah, I hate sometimes everybody. like <laughs> well it's just like i haven't uh, liked a single guest uh, what nothing nothing uh, how do i like a single guest i haven't liked a single one they oh, all not one they're all shit all oh, horrible except for my mother forgot she was on here <laughs> no because like it's it's nice to have guests because it's it's cool to have this as a as a platform to like reconnect or connect with new people and to like bring in new listeners and like you know just kind of like uh can yeah to just have that but there's something that's so nice about like i'm gonna shoot the shit with my best friend today and like whatever we're gonna talk about like cupping farts and we're gonna talk about like boob jobs uh, also and, our emotions and long balls and if you stay long enough we'll talk about our emotions you gotta sift through a lot of shit to find these gold flakes bro really really dude no this is incredible i think this is very fitting for a christmas episode you are right the, at the end of the year we get very self-reflective i was playing an etta james song today at work and looking in the mirror for 30 seconds and it was the saddest thing ever <laughs> I'd say, uh, you know me. I think people should once a year just stare at themselves in the mirror for thirty minutes. A long. It's a long. Thirty minutes is a long time. It's even longer when you, when you do it. You've done that. Yeah. This year? No, I haven't done it in a long time because I'm scared to look in there. Thirty minutes is a long time. I, I think um, uh, the, fairly recently, actually, I was on mushrooms and I did it for fifteen minutes. That's a long. And you're not supposed to. No, right? you're not supposed to look at mirrors like when you're on acid or something really. Oh, trippy. mushrooms is a different type I, of. I, it's a different kind mirror of mirror experience. I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't like grow tentacles or anything. <laughs> that would be great. Just, that would be just, great. Just looking. Um, see, I'd be scared. I'm scared to do that sober, man. I'm scared to like I did it sober. The song uh, that was that was playing was "Trust in Me" by Etta James. Yes, and I was like, I don't even know if I could trust myself. Christian, are you making the right decisions? Oh, God. Thank God we don't have kids yet, dude. Dude. Oh, my God. Melissa had this crazy joke. (laughs) Oh, she got a pregnancy scare, bro? Well, when I came in today, she said, uh, uh, because we have the pugs here, and she said, like, uh, do you want to say hi to your sons? And I was like, hi, Bogey. Hi, Teddy. And she was like, do you want to say hi to your daughter? And I'm like, daughter who? And I was like, where's our daughter? And she, like, started rubbing her stomach. Uh, And I was like, food, baby. (laughs) You better fucking eat a bunch of those pigs in a blanket. <laughs> Karen um, always calls Maddie my my daughter, and like it's it's she, we've become that's cute. Yeah, she's I've become her dog dad, and yeah. You are every single Instagram story that Karen posts. It's like you cuddling with Maddie, and you guys watching a Christmas movie, which is probably one of my favorite things to see on social media because it's so authentic. Have you seen a Christmas story Christmas? The new the sequel? No, I I saw the first twenty minutes and it's I had to stop so for whatever reason. It's actually good. really good. It's honestly it. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even being facetious. Maybe my favorite Christmas movie. It's an amazing successor. It is a beautiful. You know when I put it on, I was I was ready to be disappointed. Um, be- I was ready. Yeah, because the Christmas story. I don't is know if ready to be disappointed, but ready to not be impressed. Underwhelmed. Yeah, I was ready to be underwhelmed because like that is like. One of the greatest Christmas movies, which I'm surprised was not on the list with the... Uh, That's an oversight on our part, then. I think so, yeah. And uh, if I would have seen this before then, I would have fought really hard for it. By the way, by the time this comes out, maybe that episode will be out. Yeah, and- for our sister podcast, and here's why, we did a Christmas... Uh, best Christmas movie bracket. Yeah, that'll come out 
uh, pro- soon in the near future. I'm Either way, we'll put a link to their show. Check out their show anyways. They're yeah. cool. Um, uh, they're all right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Christmas Story Christmas I thought was done really, really well. Yeah, dude. And uh, I learned that, that's, that it's based on a book. They made a book? Well, even a Christmas story, it's based on a book called um, In God We Trust, All Others Must Pay Cash. And it was a collection of like stories that this guy um, had done. Uh, he originally told them on the radio, stories about his childhood growing up in this small town in Indiana. Mm-hmm. And um, Shel Silverstein and Hugh Hefner were like, you need to write a book. Like, this needs to be put into print. And he was like, I don't want to write. He's like, I don't, I just want to tell these stories. And Shel Silverstein copied one of his stories on the transcripts and then they edited it together and, it turned, and they were able to publish it and turn it into a kind of a running thing. So he made this book and it was a bunch of short stories of his life growing up. Uh, and three or four of them, they kind of took parts of it and turned it into a Christmas story. I love that. And, um, and then what I noticed is in this movie, in the new one, there's parts of the book that they brought in, like Flick's Tavern. The kid that he grew up with grows up to have oh, yeah. the bar. Mm-hmm. The book takes place as him in Flick's Tavern. The whole book is him and Flick reminiscing about their childhood. Mm-hmm. So it was really interesting to see them bring the bar into the movie world. And I, I was telling Karen, I think one of the reasons why this book was so successful was I think that's one of the stories from the book. Is like when his dad died and he had to come back and do Christmas. Mm-hmm. So it was like that story was already kind of figured out and set. They just had to get it going. I did also learn because of my ADHD like rabbit hole brain that I get into. This is the third time they've made a sequel for A Christmas Story. They made, oh, because there was A Christmas Story 2, right? Yes, which was not good. A different main character. And then there's another sequel for A Christmas a Christmas Story called like uh, The Hot Summer or One Long Summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and that one was made 10 years after a Christmas story and they want it and it's Ralphie and all it's the same characters, but those actors were too old already. So they had like, Different um, Macaulay Culkin's little brother played Ralphie. Oh really? Uh, and it was, and it took place in the summer and it, like, it was like, uh, people just didn't get it, you know, in the early nineties and eighties people were like, what do you mean? It's a Christmas story sequel, but it's not a Christmas. Like it's, it's like during the, it's the same character, but during the yeah, summer. So they don't understand, but this was done so well from the 20 minutes that I watched it incorporated a lot of the same... You know how, like, a lot of, like, let's say Zoolander 2 basically just recycled a lot of shit? It was right? Zoolander 1 that had been, like, shuffled up. Yep. And then, like, let's say this... Uh, I'm assuming the same for, like, Coming to America. Um, a lot of yes. these, like, sequels uh, that didn't Excuse really me. hit as hard. But with this one, it, like, took... Th- it took the patterns that were used in the first one, like, the the... Uh, the narration, and it took like these uh, these weird hypothetical, like almost Family the Guy flashbacks, flashbacks yeah. right? It's in, in and it used it incredibly. And he they do the, it really well. This the fact that he reprised his role as Ralphie. Yep, and he does it so well. Uh, he looks so good. Looks looks like okay, that's Ralphie. That's when Ralphie he grows growing up. up, of course. And that's how a- Ralphie would act as a father. I I love the acting. I think is impeccable. I, I think it's a really good movie. I think they don't over saturate it with like direct jokes uh, as a callback to the to the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are definitely a few pretty blatant like callbacks and also some really nicely woven in like one sentence throwaway things that if you yeah. like didn't re- like uh, luckily we had just seen a christmas story like maybe two days before oh, right before watching it so watching it again that. i was like oh dude like i got it i knew all the kids names already uh-huh. and like they got uh, they got all of the actors all the kids flick and uh fuck the other kid and then ralphie like they got all of those kids yeah. back and it, it's the and the, you knew the importance of the father because of how strict and how pivotal of a character he was in the first one. So I never even and his th- passing in the second. It wasn't until this one did I realize how like a Christmas story really is a story about like a dad trying to give Christmas to the family. I always saw it as just like a story about a kid who wants a Christmas present and his parents got it for him. Like it really wasn't until I watched the sequel where I was like this movie a Christmas story the original one really is about the dad. It's not about Ralphie at all. Like I, we all think it's about Ralphie because he's narrating, but no, it's about the dad trying to provide a I didn't even, decent Christmas. And man. it changed my whole thinking of the movie. Like I cried three times watching a Christmas story. Mm. Like it, 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 dude, it's so good. And then, uh, like I don't want to spoil anything for you, but the, there's a part at the end, uh, 
and it just flo- it connects the old movie with this movie so beautifully without it being like too sappy and and over oversaturated and yeah. like I could see people seeing it and being like how could they do that it's so predictable and be like well first of all it's a fucking Christmas movie and also like it's done really well like yeah yeah I know it's a good movie well I know that the a Christmas story is a classic I've always known it because it was one of those movies my dad would watch over and over again yeah during the holiday season and like make me sit down and watch scenes from oh yeah. And talk about like oh well, like, and then on Christmas Day it's on for twenty four like twenty four hours, and so many memorable things that are referenced that even like youngins pr- should probably know like the whole fucking Ovaltine drink it. Remember to drink your Ovaltine. That one far rah 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 rah, which well, so, would not pass nowadays. Far, and uh, I can't put my arms down. You can't put my you're arms down. You're gonna shoot down. your eye out. Um, you're gonna shoot your eye out. Is the do they do a moment where they stick the, the tongue, tongue on the on the pole? pole. Yeah. Okay, of so that that's a uh, yeah that. So all all of those things are so like memorable. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's 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 a movie that like everybody really does you know relate to and stuff. And I forgot uh, upon rewatching it, it is also an uh, you know a perfect like script. Like they really like lay things out really well for it to come back later on. Oh, the jokes are just timed perfectly. Well, the the leg the leg lamp that the dad wins. He's mm-hmm. doing that puzzle in the first scene when we're introduced to the dad. Oh, he's nice. doing that puzzle. When when we're introduced to Flick and the other kid, the first argument they have is about the light pole mm-hmm. thing, and like the kids are all talking about um, the the narration. In the beginning, um, Ralphie's talking about how is he going to convince his parents to be on his side and like get this gun for him, and then you know he gets in the fight and his mom protects him, and then he's like, "Shit, now I'm indebted to my mom." Yeah. This is the opposite. Like it's so it really is easily understandable as children, but now as I'm an adult and growing up, like I'm even more fascinated by this storyline and then and i like i said i can't say it enough this sequel did did it so much justice did such a great job it was one of those movies where like i i threw on just to, like throw on you need like, to watch it tonight i should yeah i really should because because like, after next week you're not gonna watch it no i'm definitely gonna watch it before christmas eve if not tonight then like definitely like, honestly maybe even watch it with your parents my i want to watch it Have, has your dad seen it i don't know i don't live with my parents anymore I so i don't know it my, could be a fun fun thing to watch with them because honestly like i i do kind of wish like i wish my brother i'd watch it with my brother um, you guys always watch movies together huh we, movies was always a big thing and christmas was always a big thing and i remember the first time we watched the christmas story we got a red rider bb gun that year for christmas because <laughs> that's, that's what my brother wanted and we got a real red rider like it was like we yeah. should um oh, get a red rider well, I mean, sure, we could get it on Amazon. But You've seen it. it. You've seen my Red Rider. Remember, I used, we used it in like improv videos and stuff in high school. Yes. Oh, that's the one you used for the True Grit video. We should, if you could find it, let's hang it up in here. <sighs> you know what? I I know it's long gone because it Bob. was one of those things that was like at a friend's house in a buddy's trunk, and then it was at another buddy's house. And... Let's order another one then. Yeah. I mean, well, not now because the new Christmas story is going to make them expensive, though. Uh... Although it wasn't even featured at all. Okay, then they probably they not. Once. Let's check it out. Let's though. do an improv scene. Let's do an improv scene. We've been doing this uh, episode for longer than we usually do with just us type of highly relevant, but fuck, dude. This there's is... plenty at the top you can cut out. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a there's little plenty. bit. Yeah, we'll there's plenty. See. We'll see. We'll see. There's some fat to trim out. Um, yeah, let's do an improv scene. Um, sure. How mm. do we usually... Because now we're not trying to say... Well, Ladies I mean, it's not that we're not. I I just kind of got over. I just kind of stopped saying it. We just right. kind of went into it. All right, we'll do it. Yeah, why don't you do it, ladies and gentlemen? Highly relevant. Um, um, Christian, I know it's Christmas Eve, and uh, everybody was expecting to get out of the office early tonight. But uh, you know, I really need these reports done. We have a bit. The case is going to resume on the twenty sixth, and Judge Feinstein doesn't want us to be. You know. But wasting any more time. This is a high is a high priority case. This man murdered four women. We need to really make sure we nail him and get him in prison. Hey, I I know that that's a lot. I understand that um, he was America's number one serial killer, and we finally got him. But Melissa made reservations. Yeah, P. F. Changs. I know. For I know. And, and you I guys do it every year. I I, I know. I know, Christian. And usually, I would be cool with it. I'm a cool guy. I'm a cool yeah. boss. You yeah. know what I mean. I don't even ask you to put in requests for PTO. I just no, let you I go. I understand that, and I deeply appreciate it. But today it. is, unfortunately, you know, I, here's, what? let me level with you, Christian. Okay. My wife also has reservations for us at 8.30 at P.F. Chang's, and to be completely honest with you, I have been a shit husband all year. I mean, And like, you've been a great, great 
fiance all year. I mean, you proposed this year. You guys went on that great trip to Afghanistan and saved all those babies. Yeah. You guys built that hut in in, in Ethiopia. I mean, you guys are doing some. You, you got a lot of good points. So I'm, what I'm what I'm thinking is, Christian, you know, you've banked up plenty of points this year. Maybe you can lose one or two. I'm already in the negative, and 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 we need these. We gotta get this report done because if I don't know, if we don't nail this guy, it. I mean, this is gonna this is gonna. Where can be the DEA jokes? Move, I mean, move over, Marsha Clark. We're going to be the dumbest DAs ever. I mean, we could have waited a day to nail him. I, I know that you're it's not... It's not up to us. The judge needs this done on the 26th. Ah, you're right. Okay, I know you're in the negative with your wife right now. I mean, you... You saw, you saw, you saw the Christmas party. Yeah, Mr. I didn't think she was going to be there. I brought my girlfriend, and she saw it. it was, I mean, you know, I'm in the hole. It's an honest mistake. I, and like, I, there's like a bunch of pigs in a blanket there, and like, no you guys hot were, mustard. No hot mustard. You did the whole lady in the tramp thing, where you put a pig in a blanket in your mouth, and you had her get to eat the other end, I which just, is ridiculous because pigs in a blanket are very short. You guys are basically making out. I, it, you know. She's a great secretary. That's yeah. how she likes to eat pigs in the blanket. Yeah, no, Ashley's be? fantastic. <clears throat> she's fantastic, and she's a great worker, but like... But my point is, look, it's it's 6.52, mm. okay? I'm, I'm willing to debate about this with you for another eight minutes. Game on. Um, well, see, it's not a game for me, Christian. I, I, I have to... Get some points with my, my, my wife. See, but, that is a game. That part is the game. No, but this is not a game. But get this. You're married to your wife already. Yes. My wife, my fiance could easily break it off. Yeah. And you wouldn't thing. have to pay an arm and a leg in divorce fees. You're right. Mm-hmm. Did you do prenup? No, of course not. Damn, that sucks. Okay, She has more money harder. than me. How much time do we have? You said... Well, but, now, now it's it's six fifty three. It's only been one minute. Okay, so we have seven minutes to talk about this. Well, because sure I, I got to go home and change. All right. I mean, wait, wait. I mean, here. Well, uh, how about you start working on? How about you start working on it now? Get as far as you can. Okay. Um, I'll lock the front door on my way out, and you just uh, make sure it's closed when you leave. Oh, okay. Let me. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. wait I feel wait. like you're just gonna run out. No, run no, out. <laughs> On Christmas Eve, Mr. Mathario, can I ask you a question? I mean, you, you did have you four find out minutes. preemptively about my eight thirty p.m. P.F. Chang's reservation, and you just want to take it, knowing uh-huh. that if I don't go, there will be a cancellation, and you're just gonna take it? I um, I uh, actually wish I was that smart. That's actually a really good idea. No, we have a like I said, we have a whole separate reservation. The thing is, though, I, I need these reports done. I know. And that- I'm not asking you to come in on Christmas Day. That would be. <laughs> Who am I, Scrooge? No, so I'm just telling you, fucking work till midnight or you're fired. Or I'm f- until midnight. I mean, you 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 you're, you're forcing my hand here, Christian. Mr. Mathario, you're forcing I'm, my hand here. I'm at the. You work here until midnight or you're fucking fired. I'm your best worker. You, you are. I'm your. That's best why I'm bringing worker. this job to you. I wouldn't trust it with anybody else. But are you going to take my reservation? No, I, I mean you're not going to be there anyways. Cut to um eight twenty. Christian finishes the papers and is able to finish it, and uh, uh, books his. <laughs> so is Christian at the um at the restaurant? Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, welcome to PF Chang's. Hi, um, sorry, um, I just have a reservation for two. Yeah, what's the name? Um, it's Christian Baltazar for eight thirty. Okay, let me take a look here. Hang on one second. <laughs> How's your day going so far? It's been it's been crazy, yeah. you know. Boss making me work, Merry work Christ. really oh, late. Yeah, a, you know what? Yeah. Uh, you said the name's under Christian Baltazar. Christian Baltazar, for you're here. um you're actually already seated. I don't know how this happened. Excuse me, I just I have well, to. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, <gasps> Mr. Matharu. Uh, I'm sorry. Please stop yelling in our restaurant. Is that Ashley that you're with? Oh fuck you! So, oh shit. Um. Okay, hey babe, we're gonna sit down with them. Oh fuck. Um, All right, so this sorry, table's Ashley. big I'm enough so for sorry. four. Hi. Hi, Hi Christian. Hi. Hey, hey, you finished? did you finish the report? I did finish it. Thank God. Can we get two chairs over here? My buddy is, I've been waiting for him. I'll stand. Okay, yeah, whatever you want. How about for your wife? Would you like it? She'll stand. Um, you know what? We'll get the You'll bill. stand, and Ashley will stand, and we're going to settle this like adults. <sighs> I know how this looks. You're making a big scene, and here's my real problem with the fact that we're making a big scene. What? 
my my wife and kids are on it at a table on the other side of the restaurant. Why do you keep doing and this? And I've been I've been Mrs. Doubt firing it, running back and forth, and now they're looking over here and they're realizing that I'm sitting here at a table with another woman. And you've kind of just blown this whole thing up, and you really you've really kind of fucked me here, Christian. Ashley, what do you think about this? I um I I'm just here for a raise. Mr. Mathario? Uh, she's going to get the raise. Okay. All right. This is not right on so many levels. Um, let me let me make it right. Hmm. Let's go back to the office. You get back to work. I'll come back to here for dinner. I'll bring your wife. Maybe me and your wife start a little thing. And then we'll go from there. I don't understand how this is beneficial to me at all. That's actually very rude that you would ask that. I just wanted you to be aware. Um, how about this? I take Ashley... I hook up with her, and how about this? I go hook up with your wife, what? and we have a threesome all together. But what about your wife? She'll watch. Can I watch? <laughs> Cut to the bedroom. <laughs> I don't know why everyone said yes to this situation. Well, Mr. hang on. Let me get this light right. Mr. <laughs> and we're recording this? Well. Mr. Mathari, was it too late to back out? I mean, you can, but only if you work tomorrow. Okay, end scene. <laughs> I was worried when we started because I thought I maybe laid it on a little too thick, too intense. No, I loved it. I could, I was able to like uh, be very grounded. That was good. Serious. I do feel really grounded. Wow, is this how we feel after doing a completely grounded scene? Yeah, it didn't, I didn't get too crazy. crazy. Just no, too not quick. at all. It we didn't let get it crazy build. at all. We let it. We let it build. All very real. It are, really are, only got <gasps> crazy because I made it crazy. Are we learning improv? Are we getting better? I think at this? so. I think, dude. Oh, whoa. What I want to do, oh, I thought it was disgusting. What I want to do is now that I have a home, uh, in not maybe once a month, like a fucking improv. Let's do a fucking improv jam here, like not in the studio, but like downstairs. downstairs. I was gonna say you got plenty of space, downstairs. and we could vlog it or some shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm down. You know, I, you know, I'm always down. I want. I I, I, I miss people. Going. I miss making people laugh and doing things in front of people. Um, yeah. Because imagine the feeling of a live audience, even if it's five of our friends just laughing at a scene. I mean, imagine we do, that. We do this for no laughs and we just kind of hope. We, I, we do this for Instagram likes and YouTube comments. But dude, I, <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, I don't like to boil it down that much, but yeah. <laughs> it's really, I mean, some of those Instagram videos pop off. Yeah, we have like 600 people. No, we have some pretty decent posts, actually. And it's all thanks to you. I, I actually want to say, since we're at the end of the episode and we're at the end of the year, um, you have done an incredible job running this show this year. Thank you. Thank you. You have not just been a producer and a co-host but and an owner of this show, um, but you have helped me and you know, you've know you given me the chance to take a step back and come back in. You've handled shows uh, on tight budgets, timelines. Um, you've gotten, you've gone to other places to record shows. You've come back, done it with me. You, you've just done an incredible job with this show. And it's really, like we said earlier, becoming its own thing and really evolving. Uh, and I couldn't be more happy to have you as this producer manager of these episodes and of these shows. And you just, you've done such a great job this year, Christian. Okay. So thank you. Dude, vice versa. I know the baddies, you know, I, I, I will not accept that. Um, <laughs> because, uh, because I it's it, I don't want to take anything away from yeah. from what you've accomplished this thank year you. for the show. Thank you. Thank and you. Um, the I know the baddies see it. Our guests when they come in they see it. I see it every single day. Melissa sees it every single day. Um, you know, this studio is built on your back, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you. Still, with all of that being said, still could not and would not have done this without you. Well, yeah, it wouldn't. Be Podcast funny. was your idea. Podcast was your idea, and I know you come in here and you give it a hundred percent. Uh, you know what? That's why Edison is given the credit for the light bulb, not the guy who actually built it. So. Oh, you have told me that before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, dude, fucking appreciate you. I, you know what? I would not be alive without you. Yeah. And but I you, mean that. I, I fucking love you, man. I love you too, buddy. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, Merry Can't Christmas. Can't wait to do this for another year, baddies. Merry Christmas to you. If Happy everything Hanukkah. works out right, we have a very special episode coming at you next week. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna set the bar really high for the year. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't work out, the episode will still be that good. Yes. Uh, I mean, but we're gonna make it good either. You'll way. know what it means. Just tune in next week for that episode, and uh, we're really excited for it because. Uh, it's a big deal to us. It is. It's a big. Thank you, guys. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. 
baddies. Happy take solstice. Easy. You guys know where to find us. I am at uh, call underscore me Jesus. And I am at Christian has asthma. Oh, and if you got a PS4 and you play NBA 2K23, hit me up. I'm at oversized rope. Oh, uh, uh, if you want to play Warzone with your boys. Yeah, I, I mean, I only play solos because I don't like talking to strangers. We should actually ask some baddies to play some video games with us. I mean, we have like streamer friends. We do. We should ask them. To play They're with too us. good though. Put us on, I'm yeah. not, like we're at a decent level to play Warzone together. I'm trash at Warzone. Ot- You're better than I am. Yeah. Well, and then Otis is a little bit better than I am. Yeah. Um, but I try hard. Yeah, and it's about the passion that you put in, dude. Not with video games, unfortunately. <laughs> it's very clearly <laughs> what makes you good or bad. Uh, well, thanks, baddies. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. See you next year. Well, no, the next episode will come out right before New Year. Oh, on the thirtieth. I think it'll come out on the 30th, man. I think that's how I think that's how it yep. works. Yup. And so we'll see you at the end of the year. And we got I mean, 2023 is gonna be hopefully a big year for us, dude. Yeah. I hopefully mean, uh, some live shows, man. We, we want to try and shows. do some fun things this year, guys. Let us know, you know, what you want to see from us. And you know, my my goal this year is to really get uh get some equal work out of me that to to, com- to compare with what you do buddy so dude oh you you'll i know you'll bring it in different ways yeah i like to bring food that's what i do I like <laughs> bring food. food to every recording thank you baddies love you guys all right love y'all bye that was good can't be that bad oh it can't be that bad oh it can't be that bad oh that bad